Today we're tackling a cosmic question that's sure to ignite your imagination. Does NASA have the technology to leave our solar system? Now, when we talk about venturing beyond the familiar confines of our celestial neighborhood, we're not just stepping into the realm of science, we're diving headfirst into the world of incredible possibilities and futuristic dreams. From the far-reaching voyages of the Voyager spacecraft, which have given us a glimpse into the vastness of interstellar space, to the mind-bending concepts of warp drives and antimatter propulsion, the journey to the stars is filled with challenges that are as enormous as space itself. So, buckle up, space enthusiasts, as we embark on this interstellar adventure to discover just how close we are to turning the science fiction of today into the science reality of tomorrow. Today, I'm thrilled to talk about some of NASA's most incredible space missions and the amazing technology they've been developing. Let's dive into this cosmic journey and explore what's out there beyond our blue planet. So, let's start with the legendary Voyager missions. These spacecraft, Voyager 1 and 2, were launched way back in 1977. They were originally just supposed to check out the outer planets, but boy, did they exceed those expectations. Voyager 1 actually entered interstellar space in 2012, with Voyager 2 following in 2018. They're like the ultimate explorers, going farther than any other human-made objects in history. And get this, each Voyager has a golden record on board. It's a 12-inch record that's like a time capsule with sounds, music, and pictures from Earth. It's a hello message to any extraterrestrial life that might stumble upon it. Pretty cool, right? Even though these spacecraft are over 40 years old now, they're still sending back valuable info about space, teaching us more about the very edges of our solar system and what lies beyond. Now these voyagers are really moving, with Voyager 1 traveling at about 38,000 miles per hour and Voyager 2 at about 35,000 miles per hour. But even at that speed, getting to our closest neighboring star would take over 40,000 years. Talk about a long trip. Their power comes from something called RTGs, or radioisotope thermoelectric generators. These convert heat from decaying radioactive material into electricity. It's a reliable power source, but it won't last forever. Eventually, the voyages will go silent as their power runs out. NASA's not just sitting back, they're always pushing the boundaries. Right now, they're focusing a lot on robotic spacecraft for deep space missions. Think rovers and probes. These missions don't need to worry about life support for astronauts, which makes things a bit simpler. Take the Mars missions, for example. The Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter are doing some groundbreaking work on the Red Planet, helping us understand if Mars could have supported life. And for human space exploration, NASA is working on the Orion spacecraft and the Artemis program, which are all about getting astronauts back to the Moon and eventually to Mars. The New Horizons mission is another big deal. It flew past Pluto, giving us our first close-up look at the dwarf planet. It's powered by an RTG-2 and can send data back from billions of miles away. Then there's the James Webb Space Telescope, which is set to be a game-changer in how we look at the universe. It's got this huge mirror, over six meters across, and it's packed with the latest tech to study the universe in infrared. It'll sit at this special point in space, away from Earth's interference, giving us the clearest view yet of distant stars and galaxies. Now let's talk about the mind-boggling challenges of interstellar travel. We're not just dreaming about reaching the stars, we're seriously pondering what it would take to get there. First off, let's wrap our heads around the distance we're talking about. The nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, is a whopping 4.37 light-years away. Imagine this. If Earth were a basketball in New York, Alpha Centauri would be like a tennis ball all the way in Los Angeles. That's not just far, it's astronomically far. Now think about chatting with a spacecraft near Alpha Centauri. A message traveling at the speed of light would take over four years to get there and another four years to get a reply. That's like sending a text and waiting eight years for a response. Speaking of speed, our fastest spacecraft, like the Parker Solar Probe, are super fast by Earth standards, but nowhere near fast enough for the stars. Even at 430,000 miles per hour, it would take tens of thousands of years to reach our closest stellar neighbor. And as we ramp up to speeds close to light speed, things get even trickier with increasing energy demands. Thanks, Einstein. The energy needed to push a spacecraft to a significant fraction of light speed is just massive. We're talking about amounts that dwarf our entire planet's energy consumption. Ideas like antimatter propulsion sound cool, but they're still in the realm of science fiction. And then there's keeping astronauts alive and well on these long trips. 
We need systems that provide everything from air to food, and they have to work perfectly for years, if not decades. Plus, space is a harsh place, full of cosmic radiation, and it's tough on the human body and mind. Think about being cooped up in a spaceship for years. It's not just a physical challenge, but a psychological one, too. Space is full of surprises like micrometeoroids and debris. Hitting even a tiny speck at high speeds could be disastrous, so we need some serious shielding. And with communication delays, spacecraft need to be smart enough to steer themselves clear of danger. For deep space missions, propellant efficiency is key. NASA's looking into things like ion thrusters, which could be better for the long haul. And let's not forget sustainability recycling resources and maybe even making what we need right there in space. Imagine a spaceship powered by nuclear energy. This isn't your regular rocket fuel. We're talking about nuclear thermal propulsion. It's like heating up a pot of water, but instead we heat up hydrogen with a nuclear reactor and then boom, it expands and shoots out to propel the spacecraft. This could make spacecraft go faster and carry more stuff, which is pretty awesome. But of course, dealing with nuclear stuff in space is tricky. Safety is a big deal, especially when we think about launching these reactors without any hiccups. Next up is something straight from a science fiction novel, Project Orion. Way back in the 50s and 60s, scientists thought about pushing a spacecraft by setting off nuclear explosions behind it. Sounds crazy, right? But theoretically, it could have zoomed through space much faster than our regular rockets. However, there was a big snag. A treaty banning nuclear tests in space and obviously the worry about radioactive stuff and accidents. So that idea was shelved. Now here's a project that's like something from a futuristic movie, Breakthrough Starshot. The plan? To send tiny, super-light spacecraft to the stars powered by massive lasers from Earth. These little guys could potentially zip through space at incredible speeds, reaching our neighboring star system, Alpha Centauri, in just about 20 years. That's lightning fast compared to what we can do now, but it's still in the early stages, working out how to make the perfect light sail and figuring out the laser tech. Let's talk about warp drive, yes, like in Star Trek. This idea is about bending space itself to move a spacecraft. Instead of the spaceship zooming through space, space moves around the spaceship. It's a wild concept that could, in theory, allow us to travel faster than light without breaking the rules of physics. Recent studies have given us some models that kind of fit with what we know about physics, but we're talking about needing some really bizarre forms of energy that we don't even know how to make or control yet. Another theoretical propulsion is antimatter. Imagine a fuel so powerful that just a tiny bit can release a massive amount of energy. That's antimatter for you. When antimatter and matter get together, they annihilate each other, following Einstein's famous ESMC2 equation, and release a huge burst of energy. This could be a game changer for space travel, giving us the kind of boost we need for those really long journeys. But here's the catch, making antimatter is super difficult and crazy expensive. We're talking about trillions of dollars for just a gram. Plus, storing this stuff safely is a huge challenge. It's like trying to keep two ultimate enemies separated. If they touch, they explode. Moving on to something a bit more peaceful, we have solar sails. These are like giant shiny sails that catch sunlight using the tiny push from the sun's photons to move through space. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, actually tested this out with their Ikaro spacecraft, which had a 20-meter wide sail floating in space. The cool thing about solar sails is that they don't need fuel. They just cruise along on sunlight, which could be great for long trips in space. But they don't speed up very fast and aren't too efficient once you get far from the sun. Now let's talk about the M-Drive. This is one wild concept. It's supposed to generate thrust just by bouncing microwaves around inside a cone-shaped chamber without needing any fuel. Sounds like breaking the rules of physics, right? Well, that's why it's causing so much debate. Some tests claimed they saw it working, but others didn't. Most scientists are pretty skeptical because it doesn't really fit with what we know about physics. So for now, the M-Drive remains more of a curious idea than a real solution. In conclusion, while these ideas are incredibly exciting and could revolutionize space travel, they also show us how much we still have to learn and develop. From antimatter to solar sails and even controversial concepts like the M-Drive, we're pushing the boundaries of science and engineering. Who knows what the future holds? Maybe one day, these theories will leap off the pages of science fiction and become real tools for exploring the cosmos. 
Keep dreaming big and looking up at the stars. The possibilities are endless. And as always, thanks for watching our video today.